Yes, I'm glad born in where this life is all. I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. Oh, Hey, uh, this is your first time here. I want to say welcome. Uh, it is our honor that you are here, and we are glad that you're here. And if you could, if you can just do us just a small favor, if you can just lift your hand, and, and we want to put a card in your hand, and, and on that card, we want just a little bit of information from you. And then as you're heading out the door today, on the left-hand side, we have a welcome booth, and you can exchange that card for a bag, and in that bag, there's lots of information about the church. Uh, there's some cookies in there, and we thank you for being here. But right now, uh, Mr. Tommy Thompson, he's going to come up here and share an update for us. Good morning. How about that tractor pull yesterday? Amen. Man, got to love loud engines and horsepower. Just a wonderful thing. Uh, man, I had some eyes, some work done on my eyes. I can see you guys this morning. What a good-looking group. Wow. This is nice. <laughs> Somebody said I shouldn't look in the mirror, Randy. A uh, little bit of update for you. Uh, we uh, really appreciate uh, everybody working on the survey. We got uh, 111 responses. We got a little over 300 families in the church, so that's about a third. Uh, an, an amazing response. Usually if you get 10% on a survey, you're doing good. So uh, y'all are obviously very interested in what we're doing, and and want us to get your input, and we did, and we uh, really appreciate it. And I'm going to share a few things with you about uh, about what you guys told us in the in the survey. Uh, the uh, kind of go down through the questions. The age of the pastor, uh, you don't care. Uh, Seventy-two percent said it doesn't matter. There were a few uh, few others uh, all up and down the spectrum. Uh, there was one that said uh, need to be about a 35-year-old and single and good-looking. Uh, <laughs> we think we know who that was, uh, but uh, 
we'll let that one go. The uh, the uh, experience was 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 really good for us to hear from you. Uh, lead pastor experience, 71% said that that's the most important thing. Uh, years in ministry, 62%, and uh, skilled administrator was uh, was 60%. So, out of that, I think we got that uh, that we need a strong senior level person that's got a lot of experience running a church like this, and is a is a good skilled administrator. As we go through the comments, one of the things that 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 kind of comes out is that we haven't had an administrator in the past and uh, the, the congregation I think uh, along with uh, with the search committee really believes that's uh, that's an important part uh, okay preference on on marriage and family and that sort of stuff you guys don't care uh, you want to you want a good strong pastor and and that's uh, that's the story on that one uh, Ministry priorities. Uh, this is this is a pretty important category for us. Uh, Sixty-nine percent of you said that you really want the the number one uh, duty of the pastor to be preparation to preach and teach. Uh, another sixty percent said prayer warrior, and then it kind of drops down into the uh, into the rest of the categories spread out. So. So strong, strong preacher and teacher and prayer warrior is what, uh, what comes out of that one. Uh, important things in a sermon, uh, 80% of you guys said that you want strong biblical knowledge and references. Uh, I think you've been listening to Brother Dale a lot on that one. Uh, application to every, everyday life came in second along with spiritual nourishment and then kind of a scattering of, of things in the, in the rest of them. Uh, interesting, I had, uh, had several people come up, come up to me and tell me that uh, humor is really important to them, but it wasn't the top three, so they couldn't circle it. Uh, so that's kind of the, uh, the, the answers to the questions. Now, if you get into the uh, end of the comments, uh, a, lot of, a lot of really well thought out, deep spiritual comments. And uh, I kind of kind of summarize what what at least I glean out of it, and I think most of the members of the committee do. And that is that uh, that we as a church uh, congregation believe that we have a really good, strong church with a strong foundation, and we want to see that continued. Uh, not not a not a whole lot of uh, voices for change. And, and quite a few comments says don't mess up what's working well. Uh, in addition, uh, you guys see the church as, as being ready to go to the next step, and uh, we need a leader that can take us to that next step. Uh, kind of interesting, nobody defined what that next step is, and, and we as a, as a search committee don't know what it is, but we know it's there. Uh, God's gonna God's gonna take us to the next step. He's gonna provide the person that'll do that, and provide the uh, the guidance through the Holy Spirit to to all of us as we achieve that. So a lot of good things for the church. Uh, we're we're taking this this survey. We're studying it, and obviously we'll be putting it into uh, into our search criteria as we go forward. Uh, just give you a little little example of the things that you think about. Uh, you know, if you, if you said we need a lot of change and we want to focus on on one aspect, then we'd go out and find somebody that's uh, that's wears cargo shorts and and flip flops and uh, has got earrings or something. And I, I've had a preacher like that; and he's really good. But that that ain't what we need here. So uh, so so we're gonna gonna put our put our search focused on uh, on where where you guys and the spirit have led us and all that all that converges in, uh, in the one that, uh, that the Lord has for us. Uh, where we are on the, on the search, we have seven candidates right now. And uh, although that's not a big number, I can tell you it, it is a very strong candidate field. So we're going to enter, starting uh, this afternoon, into the phase of our, of our search where we start evaluating those individual people that have have expressed an interest in uh, in leading this congregation, and we'll see if the Lord's anointed is is one of those seven. 
Uh, if so, we'll we'll move forward. If not, we'll uh, we'll we'll continue moving forward and get more resumes. We are still accepting resumes, so if you know anybody that's interest, have, interested, have them get them in. Uh, and as always, uh, I'll be available to take questions. And thank you for your participation and for being such a wonderful and good-looking church. Hey, y'all don't stop praying for that. Uh, they, are, they are working tirelessly uh, over all this, and there's, there's a lot of hard work that goes into all that, and y'all don't stop praying. Uh, pray for that search team. Pray for our next pastor. Pray for the staff. Uh, just, just continue to pray throughout this whole deal. But right now, Mr. Don Hatton is going to come up here and share just a little bit uh, about the tractor pool. Morning, everybody. I want to thank everybody. Personally, I can't get to everybody that, that was here, but uh, I want to tell you thank you from the bottom of my heart for stepping up and, and helping us put this event on. It, it ran real smooth. We ran almost 200 hooks, which is unheard of. Uh, and we were out of here before dark last night. I want to say thank you for all of those that, that came out and, and actually helped. But I want to say thank you, too, for those that prayed for us, for, prayed for this event. If, if anybody was watching the weather, which I knew a lot of you were, the storm split, went around Athens. There's not but one person that could do that. And, Amen. and for that, I thank everybody that helped out. Uh, I was the announcer in the middle of the ring and trying to run two sleds at the same time. It got kind of hectic at times. And I could see things out there and people that didn't sign up to help. They'd run over and help these people. And, and that's what pulls us all together is the love of each and every one of us to help out and I want to say thank you for that and hopefully we'll pull this together again next year if we're here we may not be but uh, there's only one person who knows that thank you again the tractors were cool but man y'all should have seen the lawnmowers Man, they were awesome. Yeah. All right, so we got a lot going on this week. Uh, every night there is something going on. So if you can't get plugged in, it's your own fault. Uh, so Monday, we have our cultural impact uh, uh, ministry. They're going to be in here uh, from 6.30 to 8.30. Make sure if you want to be a part of that, you are here. Uh, Tuesday, we're going to be, uh, we got rough stock. And so kitchen open at 6, 6.45, service starts. And, and make sure you're there. It's always a good time. Wednesday night, we got Bible study. Uh, so be sure to be here for that. Thursday, we have our open ride. So if you want to come up and just ride your horse around, uh, we'll have some obstacles set up in the arena you can do. Or if you want to come ride in circles, come on up and ride in circles. It's always a good time. I love open rides. And then uh, Friday night, we have our movie night. Doors open at 630. And we're going to be showing uh, Soul Surfer. And so uh, be sure to be here for that. And then Saturday, we have our trail ride. And what we're going to do is we're going to meet out at Trace Trails uh, at 8 o'clock. And then we're going to ride out uh, shortly thereafter. And so if you're, if you're running from behind or anything like that, uh, shoot me a text. Call me. Uh, call somebody that you know is going to be there because uh, I want to make sure everybody's there. And then we'll ride out. We'll ride for, you know, two, three, four hours, something like that. And then uh, we'll come back. So... And then we got our ladies' Bible study, or excuse me, ladies' banquet on the 23rd. And uh, I believe that's it. Oh, the most important thing, we got a baptism this morning. That's right. And so we got, that's definitely exciting. All right, y'all, let's pray with me. Lord, I thank you for this day. God, I thank you. Uh, God, I thank you that we do have this baptism, that we can, uh, God, we get to enjoy that. That the angels will, th will throw a party up in heaven because of it. And Lord, I thank you that we have this building that we get to worship in. And Lord, I pray right now that you would be with the band. God, that would lead us into worship. God, be with Brother Rod as he would uh, bring a message that you have laid on his heart. Powerfully. And Lord, I thank you for who you are. And Lord, we love you. Amen. Hey, y'all get up and shake somebody's hand.
Everybody, as y'all are making your way back to your seats, uh, I forgot one announcement. I said it was it, but but I forgot it. Hey, uh, we talked about Sky Ranch last week, and if you want to uh, be a part of the scholarship program that we have for Sky Ranch, there's a meeting next Sunday right after church, and so we need you to be there if you want to be a part of that scholarship program next Sunday right after church for Sky Ranch. When I think of how we came so far from glory You came and dwelt among the lowly such as I To suffer shame and such disgrace Then I ask myself this question. cross it go for who am I and I'm reminded of these words I'll leave you never just be true and I'll give to you a life forever I want done 
would pray, not my will, but thine, Lord. The answer I may never know is why he ever loved me so. Yet to an old rugged cross he'd go. For who am I? One more time. my will but thine Lord oh the answer I may never know it's why he ever loved me so yet to an old rugged cross it goes for who am I yet to an old rugged cross it goes for who am I?
you glad you're a child of the King today? Just worship Jesus. Here we are. In your presence. Lifting holy hands to you. Here doing good today good good I just want to mention something uh as I was listening to Wayne sing a child of the king there's a there's a part in there that's not really true and I'll share it with you but there is another part that is true the one part about 
that is not true. He says his hair's a little long. He needs to change that part that his hair's a little thin. <laughs> and the other part is that he, he talks about singing off key. That is very truthful that Wayne does sing off key. So anyway, I just thought I'd share that. Most people, y'all probably didn't catch it, but I did. So I thought I might have mentioned it. Um, there will be no youth tonight. Everybody hear me. No youth tonight. Colleen had something come up, and, and she won't be able to be here tonight. So she texts Melody and asked to announce that there will be no youth tonight. Uh, so if you show up, you might have to come into Mr. Jim's class and hang out. Uh, the other thing, the baptism. Trey mentioned the baptism today, and it's, it's always awesome that when we get to baptize people. And uh, just to get to hear this young lady tell me about her salvation experience was overwhelming last Sunday. As she, she came and found me and said, I, I want to get baptized. And she shared with me how she had received Christ, and it's, it's amazing. Uh, so that's really exciting. Uh, we're going to be in the book of Luke today. And uh, as I prayed this week about, Lord, where do you want me to go next? He said, start where you left off. And that's where we're going to start. We, we're going to start where we left off last Sunday, that we serve a risen Savior, and we're going to start right there. But as we read in Luke, and I'm going to just kind of go through all what I'm going to speak on today, but my message is don't miss Jesus. And as if the, these two disciples were walking down the road, the road to Emmaus, and it says it was about seven miles from Jerusalem to Emmaus. So it would be like this. We need a reference point to know how far seven miles is. If you'll get out there at the cell barn and start walking to Malakoff, that's about seven miles. Sometimes most of us wouldn't want to walk seven miles to go somewhere. Some of us don't even want to get in our car and drive to church seven miles away. I mean, it's obvious it's not filled up, so some people didn't even want to come. But as they go down this road, as they're walking along, they're conversing. They're talking about all the things that had happened that day. The very same, same day that Jesus had arisen from the grave, they're walking along and they're conversing about what had happened. And they run into this man and they don't even recognize this man because it's Jesus and he comes up and asks him, what are you talking about? And they start telling him all the things that had happened to Jesus of Nazareth, of what it says, the Scripture says, all the things that had happened to Jesus. And they said, we were hoping that he was going to be the Redeemer of Israel. And they're talking to the guy. Can you imagine that? So as they go along, Jesus opens the Word of God and starts sharing the Word of God with them. And then he goes on, and as they get a little further, as they're getting to their destination, these men ask Jesus to come in and stay with them, and he has fellowship with them. He breaks bread with them, and at that moment, they realize they were in the presence of Jesus. You know, it makes me think the other day I was on my project, and I have a very busy project, and how distractions can cause us to lose our focus. I have lots of lane closures on my project. And there's lots of signs, message boards, arrow boards, men out there with a stop sign saying you're going to have to stop. In a matter of minutes, I pulled up on one, and I seen a concrete truck slide past a flagger because he didn't see him. There was distractions all. There was men that got on my job that were never supposed to be there. They come across the, the county line. They weren't even supposed to be on the project. And they got in my lane closure, and they couldn't see the flagger. A concrete truck slid past a flagger. And I'm on the phone, I see a car go past him. But the distractions were distracting the people from seeing the, the sign. See, as these men traveled along the road to Emmaus, they had distractions, and they didn't even realize that Jesus was in their presence. He's right there talking to them, an arisen Savior. But sometimes in our walk with Christ, we have so many distractions in our life, we don't even recognize Jesus. We don't recognize what He has for us because of all the stuff that we put in our life. So we're going to start at verse 15. Get my glasses adjusted here. So while they were conversing and reasoned that Jesus had drew near and went with them. As they were conversing and reasoning. And if you look at the, 
and I had to do a little word study, this word reason in the Greek means something different. And this is what it means. It means that they were arguing and questioning. See, sometimes we start arguing with ourselves and questioning what Jesus really has for us. Man, I've done it in my life. Lord, do you really want me to do this? And I, don't, I can't reason with really what he wants. I want to argue with what he has for me. And I want to question what he has for me instead of just going and doing. See, sometimes in our life, the distractions in our life will cause us to do that. It does me. I'm just being honest. And then it goes on and says in verse 16, But their eyes were restrained so that it did, they did not know him. Their eyes, their focus of their eyes were restrained. They couldn't see that it was him. Who is him? It was Jesus. They were right there in his presence because they were arguing and, and questioning what he had done on the cross and coming out of the tomb. Their eyes, they couldn't see that it was the man, Jesus, right in front of them. See, there's so many times in life that we go through life, and I do it all the time. I get going so fast that I run past the stop sign that it was Jesus there in my presence. He was the one that had called me to this person to share God's Word, and I run past the stop sign, and I don't even see the man in need. I'm being honest with you people today because I've done it myself. He's called me to something, and I go past the stop sign. You know, we think about it as sometimes that might be the only day somebody ever sees Jesus coming out of us. Don't run past the stop sign. Quit arguing and reasoning what God has for you. See, we're supposed to walk by faith, not by sight. Just because their eyes were restrained doesn't mean that we can't still see Jesus. I put on my glasses so I can see the Word better. I put on my glasses so I can see you. Mr. Tommy about left his glasses up here a while ago, and he wasn't going to see nothing. Trey had to run him down, give them back to him. But see, don't let your faith be where you've got to walk by sight. Man, we, we should be walking by faith, not by sight. See, and these guys were cruising along, and they were walking by sight. But their eyes were messed up, and they couldn't see Him. They could not see Jesus standing right there in front of them. I've got to share this other part. This is, this is pretty cool. So what was the conversation? And he said to them, What kind of conversation is that you have with one another that you would walk and are sad? What kind of conversation were they having? They were having the conversation of what Jesus had done. And they were saddened. They were saddened. It should make us sad when you think about what Jesus has done for us in our life. The first thing that he's done in our life, he died on the cross for us. Man, if that don't make you sad, you need to probably get a heart check. You might even think about, maybe you ought to see if you really know Christ. Because as I read his word every day, and we talk about the parables, man, as I read God's word every day, it's a picture that he painted for me. That he loved me. And he died for me. And I, as I read more and more and study his word, it shows me how much he loved love me. And I see this picture. I see, I see what he done for me. And it's an endless love from Genesis to Revelation. He shows us how much he loves us. And he paints that picture every day. That's the conversation that makes me sad. But as they were walking along in Luke 24, 6 and 7, it says, Remember how he spoke to you when he, he was still in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of a sinful man and be crucified and on the third day arise. Be delivered into the hands of a sinful man. Christ was delivered into the sins in the hands of a sinful, sinful man, which was me. That's me, the sinful man, that he was delivered to, to me to be crucified because of my sin in my life. He was willing to go to the cross for me. See, we need to look at his word and start studying what all he's done for us 
Instead of thinking about, oh yeah, he died on the cross for me and he rose on the third day, we celebrated Easter, we're good to next, next Easter Sunday. See, these men are on Easter Sunday and they're done missing Jesus because he's right in front of them. That's the conversation they're having. What conversation are you having with Jesus today? That's my question to you. What conversation did you have with him this morning when you arose out of your bed? Are you still maybe sleepy and need to get some more coffee? See, he wants us to rise up and walk forth out of the tomb because he did. Rise up. And then we go on and look at verse 18. And I call verse 18 the attitude. See, our attitude sometimes will make us miss Jesus. We can have a bad attitude and never see him in the room. And these two men, as they were conversing, this, this is pretty cool. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him and said to him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem, and have you not known the things in which had happened there in these days? He's talking to the man that had it happen to him. He's got an attitude. Are you the only stranger? Can you imagine standing there face to face with our Lord and Savior and, and asking these questions? Going like, dude, don't you know what happened to him? But you know what? Sometimes we have that same kind of attitude. Oh, I've been praying, Jesus, that you'll deliver me from this smoking habit. Oh, Jesus, I'm... I've been praying that you're going to take drinking out of my life. Quit buying cigarettes and quit going to the beer store if you truly want to be delivered. Quit doing the things that you've always done and start doing the things that Christ has called you to. I just want to be honest with you because if He's never going to deliver you if you continue to go down the same old path. He can. But sometimes we've got to let pain do its work. I'm a big advocate on pain doing its work. See, when I rode horses for a living... I rode lots of bronchi colts. I mean, it's like, that's what I drew, is bronchi colts. And that's okay, because I'd let pain do its work. If you want to be bronchi, you can stand tied up for a day or two. I'll feed you and water you, but you're not going to get to lay down. You can stand saddled there. I got a picket line beside my barn. It's got six picket lines on it, hanging down. Come by my house when I was riding horses, there'd be one standing on it every day. Sometimes I'd give them what they call a spiritual fast. You'll be hard-headed, just spiritually fast then. I fast, you can fast. So sometimes we've got to let pain do its work. So our attitude, sometimes our attitude will make us miss Jesus. What about your attitude towards your spouse? Maybe your spouse needs to see Jesus shining through you today and show her the love or him the love that you, they so much desire. Have you ever thought about that? Maybe today is the only person that your spouse is going to see that has Jesus shining through them. We've got to think about these things. We don't want to miss Jesus. What about our church family? What about our church family? And it makes me think of a young man, and I spoke at his funeral. I'm talking about a young man. He was one of my youth, and he got killed in a car wreck. And I seen Zach Popper sit out here beside the church one day. Everybody was leaving the church, and there was a broken down car with a lady in it. Not Zach Popper. He pulled over and helped the lady that was broke down. We have a church full of people leaving, and that lady needed some help that day, and it was a young man, a youth that she got to see Jesus shine through that man that day. See, somewhere there might be somebody here in this building that needs a church family member to pray for them, to love on them. Let them see Jesus shining through you today. What about your co-workers? Anybody that knows that I work at the state and they all know that I'm a pastor at this church and it does not bother me at all to let them know that I serve the Lord and He is my Savior. See, sometimes we need to be willing to stand up for Christ in our workplace. Change the attitude of the workplace. Philippians 2, 14 and 15, it says, 
Do all things without complaining and disputing, that you may become a blameless and harmless child of God without flaw in the midst of this crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine like a light in the world. I'm going to give you all a great demonstration. Read it in a devotional. If I can get my flashlight to come on. Here we go. How many of y'all can see the light shining on that flashlight? None of us. But my flashlight is shining on my light. See, when we come into this church building, we're among believers. Believers in Christ. And we let our light shine inside the church building. But what if I take that same light and turn off every light in this room? and have it on. That light's going to illuminate the same as it was when I had it on. But see, when we go out the church walls, if we, when we go outside into this, this generation, this crooked and perverse generation, He tells me to let my light shine before man, that it might glorify my Father in heaven. Same light. But we need to be outside shining our light in a dark world these days. Man, they're killing babies like they're leading lambs to slaughter. And it doesn't phase us. It should phase you. we got to let our light shine. Not only inside this building, but outside the building. we got to let our light shine. Colossians 1 and 2, it says, If you were risen with Christ, seek those things above where Christ is seated, set, setting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above. See, it's our attitude. We need to set our mind on things above because I'm going to tell you right now, when I get out of God's Word, my mind is not set on things above. I get a very bad attitude when I get out of the presence of God and I say, oh, I'm going to spiritually fast today and I'm not going to read God's Word. Well, it takes about 30 minutes and my attitude goes on a decline. And the longer I stay out of God's Word the farther decline happens. See, some of us only come to church on Sunday and we only crack our Bible open on maybe Sunday if you brought it. Just being honest. I've been there before. Understand it. See, but how are you going to have the same mindset of Christ if you never search out His Word? See, He's painted a picture for us how much He loves us and cares for us, but we don't want to read the instruction manual. Bible. Basic, li basic living instructions before leaving earth. Pretty simplistic. See, we've got to have the same mindset of Christ, and if we're going to have that, we've got to be studying His Word. We've got to be having compassion, because I'm going to tell you right now, if you want an attitude change, you get into God's Word. And I'm going to show you about these two men what, here in a little bit, how it changed their attitude. First, Thess First Thessalonians 5.19, it says, Do not quench the Spirit of God. See, a bad attitude will quench the Spirit of God. Children of Israel in the, in, the, in the wilderness, grumbling and complaining, just make another circle. Just make another circle. See, if you want to continue to live the life of mediocrity, keep quenching the Spirit of God. What's awful quiet in here? See, I lived so many years in the of life of mediocrity. Jesus didn't tell me I had a life of mediocrity, but that's what I chose. So I had an attitude change. Let's go on to now to, to verse 30 and 31. And as they're walking down this road, the verses right before it, Jesus basically, re he does, he didn't know basic. He rebukes these two men in verse 25. And I'll just read just a little bit of what it says. He says, O foolish ones, and slow to heart to believe in all the prophecy the prophets have spoken. He's telling them, man, where's your faith at? And he shares the word of God with them, starting from the law of Moses and the prophets and all the way through the scripture, Jesus shares the word with them as they're walking along. Now we get down to verse 30 and 31. 
and they've drawn near to the village of where they're going. They've drawn near to Emmaus, and it's getting late. In verse 31 it says, Now it come to pass, as he sat at the table with them, that he took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. They've been walking down the road seven miles. They get to the house, and these men ask Jesus to come in and stay with them. And he says they come to the table. They come to the table. They come to the table and had fellowship with Jesus. When's the last time you had fellowship with Jesus? They come to the table and had fellowship. It says, if we walk in the light as he is the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us of all sin. See, if you really want to have an attitude change, if you really want to make a change in your life, Man, you've got to get in the presence of Jesus. You've got to start fellowshipping with Jesus every day because it's going to do a cleansing. It's going to get rid of all the sin in our life. And the Word said, we think about the big stuff. What about the little stuff? The word sin means miss the mark. How many marks are you missing? Oh, them big ones are easy to get rid of. But you know what? Jesus don't want to stop with the big stuff. He wants to get down to the nitty-gritty stuff where it really matters. He wants to fine-tune you. He wants to hone on you. He wants to sharpen you to the point that you are sharpened by His Word, by His fellowship. Cleanse us of all our sin. That's what happens when we have fellowship with Jesus. And it goes on, it says that He took the bread and He broke the bread. See, we go through life and we think about physical eating, Give you donuts out there every Sunday morning. Fill you up physically, get you on a sugar high. But what about our spiritual feeding? See, if we're going to grow spiritually, we're going to have to be fed spiritually. Amen? Huh. Y'all agreed with me. In John 16, 35, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger. He who believes in me will never be thirsty. See, we need to go to the bread of life. We need to go to Jesus and be getting fed every day because there's so many of us that thirst and hunger. It all comes from Him. We've got to have fellowship with Him. Then we need to start breaking bread with Him. He is the bread of life. His Word, the bread of life. We need to start partaking in that bread of life that He's written to us, that instruction manual for life. And He says we'll never thirst again. We don't only need His bread of life, but we need that living water. He says because we'll never thirst again. And then verse 31, it goes like this. Then their eyes were open, and they knew him. And then he vanished. Their eyes were open, and they knew him. The verses before that, they said their eyes were restrained. But when we start having fellowship with Jesus... Our eyes are open, and we know Him. We've got to have fellowship with Jesus. And Paul writes in the letter, and this is a prayer, he says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which you were called. The hope. Cleopas and his friend traveling along, he says, we were hoping that he was the redeemer of Israel. He is. We just got to recognize him. We got to have our eyes open. We got to have our eyes focused on him. Take all the distractions out of your life and just sit down 
early in the morning and just get in his presence, just start fellowshipping with Jesus. Because as these men walked along and they got to fellowship with Jesus, they recognized it was him. Man, this is our Messiah. This is our Savior. This is the one that has arisen. Man, we are to, this is the one who has arisen. He is no longer in the tomb. See, we need to start just like it was Easter Sunday again today. He is an arisen Savior. Open up your eyes and see Jesus and start walking with Jesus. Don't walk down the road and miss Him. And this is the next part. This is where the attitude change comes in. Verse 32. And then they said to one another, Did our hearts burn within us while we talked, while he talked with us on the road, and while he opened the scripture to us? Attitude change right there. Our hearts burned inside us. <laughs> Man, I remember the day that my heart got on fire for Jesus. I went with a friend of mine to a concert. It was called Hot Hearts Concert. It was a youth rally for youth kids, and all these bands were up in Texarkana. He said, hey, you want to go with us? I said, not really, because uh, I really didn't like kids. <laughs> and we got two vans full of teenage kids. And when you stop at a place to eat, there's not one of them that can agree with what they want to eat. So we pull over. One, some of them want to go to Taco Bell. We got some of them want to go to Pizza Hut. And some of them just want to go to the gas station to get something to eat. So they're going everywhere. And my patience is about, as long, about that long. And I'm wanting to throttle all these kids that are in the van because they're just, I mean, the, van, the van's jumping around, noisy. And I'm, that's not me. I don't want to be there. So we finally get there. And then we go in this huge church in Texarkana, and all these Christian artists are there. And the one that stands out the most to me, and I listen to him all the time, I listen to him this morning because I think he's so anointed, was named Dave Crowder. And I started hearing his music and how he's singing about Jesus. And I thought, man... I've been missing it all these years. And my heart changed. I started getting on fire for Christ because I was willing to go to a place that I'd never been before. I was willing to walk down that road to Emmaus. I was willing to find Jesus at all cost because I'd ran past him so many times in my life. And I walked right past him, and I was sick and tired of missing him. But I had to get out of my comfort zone and go with a bunch of youth kids to a concert and realize that, you know what? He does love me. And he set me on this, this journey about having my heart on fire for Christ. So my question today would be to you is this. Where's your heart at? Matthew 6, says this, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. See, if we're going to get our heart on fire for Jesus, we've got to be seeking first His kingdom and His righteousness. And it goes on, it says, Then all these things will be given unto you. See, my heart changed that day. And it quit being about Rod Millsap and what I could do in myself. And it started about seeking Him first. In his kingdom. You know, everybody knows Jeremiah 29, 11, but I love the verses after that, 12 and 13. It says, Then when you call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Man, it's a heart thing. Our attitude is directly connected to our heart. 
See, if we're going to really get our hearts burning for Jesus, you've got to have a heart change. And it makes me think about it, and I wrote it down, and it's not going to come up on the screen. But in Leviticus 6, it talks about the high priest and, and the altar of sacrifice. It said that they took wood and that, that, that wood and that sacrifice and that altar, and the fire never went out. They continued every day to put wood on never went out. See, it's like this. That altar that they're talking about, that's our heart. See, we can have a heart for Christ, and that heart can burn so passionately. And we can continue to put the wood on it, which is God's Word, and sharing His Word, and going doing His will. Or we can be like the church in Laodicea. He says this. He said, I'd rather you be cold or hot, not lukewarm. There's so many churches today in Athens, Texas that's lukewarm. I'm sick and tired of going and seeing lukewarm churches. See, I want to be on fire for Jesus, and the only way that happens is you've got to have a relationship with Him today, not tomorrow. I'm talking about today. If you want to get hot on fire for Jesus, you need to get the presence of Jesus. That's the only way that you're going to get on fire for Him, and that altar of your heart will never go out if you'll continue to seek it with all your heart. Seek Jesus with all your heart. He'll hear you in your prayers. Be on fire today. That's what Easter's about. These guys, it said, and then they recognized Him. And you can read on down in the Scripture, it says this. They done walked seven miles to get to Emmaus. Seven miles. Get out there at the cell barn, and just start going to Malakoff. Most of us wouldn't do it. But when you get there, and you get into the presence of Jesus, this is what happened to them men. When their heart got on fire for Christ, they turned around and walked right back to Jerusalem because they wanted to tell somebody about Him. See, they wanted to tell that they have a risen Savior. They had been in the presence of Him because they had fellowship with Him. Do you want to get on fire? Would you walk 14 miles to see Jesus? Would you walk 14 miles to tell somebody how He's changed your life? See, if you get a heart on fire for Christ, you'll do anything at all costs to tell somebody about Him. Are you there today? Man, we serve a risen Savior. He's no longer in the tomb. Dead people live in a tomb. Our Savior is not in the tomb. He is a risen Savior. He is alive in a well today, sitting at the right hand of the Father in heaven waiting to come back and to redeem His people. Are you one of the redeemed? Is He going to come home and say, come on home, good and faithful servant? When you stand in His presence, or is He going to say, depart from me, you evildoer, I never knew you. He's going to say one or the other. Where are you at today? Wayne, come on up here, brother. Y'all start playing. Man, you've got to have a fire, fire in your heart. You, it's got to be a burning desire, man. I'm telling you, don't miss Jesus. I love it. You do that? That's all right. I love kids. See, it's crazy how the Lord sent, took me from didn't want to be around kids to now it's just like. And like I'm, a, I'm like a, a give in to, to uh, I done it yesterday at the rope, and my wife goes, you did what? These these four or five girls come up to me and, and they're, they've got this little old basket and they're selling cakes and cookies and, and stuff. I said, well, what's it cost? They said, oh, just give a donation. So I did. Melody goes, what it's for? I said, I don't know what it was for. Them kids were needing some help. I just give it to them. See, a heart change will make you from going not wanting to be around kids or your spouse or your co-workers or supposedly your brothers in Christ to where you have a burning desire to be with them. Amen. So if y'all would stand, Trey, come on up here, brother. We're going to close, and then we're going to have a baptism. We're not going to tarry long. But is your heart on fire for Christ today? Have you received Christ as your Lord and Savior? Is the altar of your heart on fire? Do you continue to put wood on it? Or is it just smoldered out? Oh, Lord, I pray right now, Father. I pray for the person in here today, Father, that their heart is just smoldering. 
Father, I pray that burning desire, Father, that their hearts would be enlightened. Father, their hearts would ignite on fire for you. I pray for the person today that's never received Christ as their Lord and Savior. They need a Redeemer, and the Redeemer's Jesus. Pray out, call out upon Jesus today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.